Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women as ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today has had a remarkable journey from a barefoot schoolboy in Bengal to a grandmother who died in the famine, to Scottish Church College, the first PhD from IIT Kharagpur, UCLA to becoming a co-discoverer, so the team leader that uh, developed the LASIK eye surgery, uh, to being featured in the lifestyle of the rich and famous on television, and uh, most recently uh, in the news for writing a book, Codename God, The Spiritual Odyssey of a Man of Science. As is Dr. Mani Bhomik, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Bhomik, yours has been a remarkable journey, as you said, you know, sort of several lifetimes in a sense rolled into one, uh, you know, from, from, from the, the villages, villages of West Bengal um, to the pinnacle of, of wealth and glamour. Uh, and then you turn to spirituality. In some ways, your notion of happiness obviously evolved and kept changing. What is happiness for you today? What does happiness mean? What does it mean to be happy for you? Uh, as you mentioned that it changes and uh, uh, before I had my material abundance uh, I used to, uh, m most of my goal was uh, sort of uh, ag uh, material aggrandizement but uh, I realized that uh, th that is not uh, a, uh, abiding happiness, it's excitement, more excitement and uh, abiding happiness is only possible with an inward dive to your own, own uh, uh, inside. That inward dive inside. Yes. Uh, but you're still very wealthy. Uh, you know, blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, is uh, material wealth uh, potentially a liability to happiness? Good question. Um, uh, up to a certain point, uh, material wealth gives you freedom and after that it becomes a liability actually because then you're worried about who is going to take your money away the lawyers after you and then money becomes for power and and uh, uh, ego uh, then it become a prisoner of, of your own wealth mm -hmm. but up to a certain point uh, my standard would be if you have enough income to live anywhere in the world comfortably that's a pretty, uh, you know, tall standard. You know, you, you grew up influenced by, you, you know, you've written in your book about, uh, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, of, you know, cleaning his toilet. That's yes. a very sort of fundamental kind of experience. And here was Gandhiji who said, you know, man needs enough for his needs, yes. not his greed. Yes. And here you are, a disciple of, of the Mahatma, delving deep inside. And you want to be to live comfortably anywhere in the world, Swiss chalet. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? No, nothing wrong, it's just a question. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh. if uh, God has given us this uh, ability to, uh, to enjoy every moment in a different way without harming anybody, uh, uh, including yourself, uh, then uh, I think that uh, uh, it's for us to uh, enjoy. But As a man of science, yes. uh, you know, this, this notion of need and greed really yes. was also related yes. to the planet. You know, yes. Can the planet sustain yes. everybody's greed? Yes. So somewhere uh, mm -hmm. there have to be defining boundaries to what these material needs right. that everyone in the planet right. can together mm -hmm. legitimately aspire yes. to. Yes. So what, as, as you know, you're a scientist, you've done I have thought a you've lot done about it. more than 50 you know, research papers mm -hmm. and written extensively. Yes. So what is that balance? I have thought about it a great deal. And um, I think that uh, uh, it's probably a well-known fact uh, to many scientists that, uh, uh, that uh, Earth can sustain 15 billion people with the uh, uh, resources that we have in recycling and eventually solar power. Um, uh, and right now, uh, we have six point some uh, uh, billion people and growing, of course. But look where it is growing. Mm -hmm. It's growing where there's poverty. Uh, as, as, as you see in the West, <coughs> as you see in Japan, where economic development uh, uh, has been sufficient, uh, the population is increasing, not increasing, it's going down. 
and uh, uh, so uh, uh, no matter how you look at it, the only way to control the population is not through birth control, it's through economic development. So I, because when, it's a proven fact, and uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of economists would agree uh, that uh, the best birth control is through economic development. And, and yet, ironically, economists yeah. will also tell you that the great future of India lies because we have such a large growing population that's going to be, um, you know, sort of potential consumers who are going to provide this great catalyst for economic growth. But anyway, you know, your area is, is looking at science and, and, and spirituality. Yes. And that is really your current passion and codename God yes. is an exploration of that. Yes. Uh, and you talk about, uh, in, in, in the book, a great deal about discovering the oneness, yes. uh, which yes. is the aspiration mm -hmm. of uh, religious aspirants, it's the aspiration of the mystical experience, yes. and in a sense, for you, the conclusion of science. What is this oneness that you describe? Um, as you know, this year, the Nobel Prize in Physics has been given on cosmology, uh, the discoveries that uh, give uh, data that brings us to the very almost the birth moment of the universe. And at that point, as uh, the universe was so small uh, that compared to us, it was so small that uh, it was, uh, we are as small as the universe is bigger uh, compared to us. And uh, so uh, that uh, combined with the fact that about two years ago, the uh, Nobel Prize in Physics was given on, uh, in the uh, terms of a uh, Nobel Committee for uh, the theory of everything. This audacious theory aims to prove that everything, even though it looks so different, they all come from one, one, that different aspects of the same, same entity. And so now it is conceivable that the, the entity was present at this very impenetrable nugget of space uh, with the blueprint and is sequentially unfolded uh, into what we have this but diversity. It's interesting you, you, you use the phrase entity because it immediately uh, assumes uh, a form of, uh, I don't know what, intelligence implies points to notions of divinity, something, being. You know, all these words come up when you say entity as opposed to just saying, I don't know what, energy, well, <laughs> emptiness. I, I, this is one reason. I, this is, is uh, emptiness at the same time is full. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything came from zero. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, this uh, universe today has total energy of zero. And no amount of energy can be created or destroyed in totality, so it must have come from zero. So z zero uh, in, uh, represents nothing at the same time quantum physically. It represents everything, it's a superposition of everything. So um, uh, the, uh, uh, why, I <coughs> why I say entity is because uh, this is why I, I call the book Code Name God, because when you do not know exactly what it is, but you have some idea, then it's, and people call it by a different name, mm -hmm. God, Allah, Muhammad, uh, that's, that's, that's why uh, we call it a code. And mm -hmm. I think that uh, probably it's fair to say that there is as many ideas of uh, the God or entity as there are people in this world, because uh, 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 we can only perceive as much as nature allows us to perceive. Uh, in, 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 uh, and, uh, so uh, science is now uh, giving the validation to that experience. And it's really uh, uh, interesting to me that uh, our rishis were able to experience this oneness through meditation, through uh, yoga, uh, even before we had any chance of uh, uh, even coming close to uh, showing that. And they, of course, experiencing you've, you've, you've written so eloquently that they described it as Brahman. Yes. We'll just come back to that in a moment. You're watching a conversation with Dr. Mani Bhomik, scientist and the person vigorously engaged in a spiritual odyssey. And he describes his journey as the spiritual odyssey of a scientist. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Dr. Mani Bhomik. We were talking about the, the oneness um, yes. of, yes. of um, all universe, something that sort of circumscribes it, um, in, in, in human emotion, this, this, this great need 
to merge, you know, whether it is in, in, in romantic love or with one's parent, in, in whatever situation, to, to merge into oneness. But that oneness experience, uh, and you said, uh, you know, is given different names, uh, isn't that some, uh, a somewhat presumptuous um, uh, assumption that um, people experience that oneness in different vocabularies, in different terms, and we're not always willing to acknowledge that my understanding of oneness, whether I describe it as God or as Shunyata or Allah, may not be the same as your experience and understanding of oneness. And hence that leads to conflict. Yes. Um, this is where science comes in, I believe. Because uh, science is now showing that oneness is not a blind faith. Uh, because so far people have believed in it because it has enriched their lives spiritually and uh, uh, but it was blind faith and sometimes blind faith can lead you down a thorny path uh, a good example is that uh, some people believe that uh, if you kill others who doesn't believe in your faith it's all right you go to heaven and uh, but when you realize that we all come from one single source that is a very mistaken belief and here science can help us and also now science is really showing very uh, uh, pictorially and very uh, without any uh, doubt or, or without I should say with, uh, uh, with, a, with a, uh, a, a lot of evidence that we all indeed come from one single source we're all part of tar stardust we are made of stardust but yet there is so much of, uh, of, of shall I say belief yes. um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Christian theologians, yes. uh, for example, or, or, or Muslim theologians, yes. or, or mm -hmm. you know, Hindu theologians, yeah. uh, you know, who don't believe in non-duality but who believe in duality, for example, uh, you know, would all uh, perhaps argue uh, that uh, you know the rationality of science is limited by the human mind, and after all, we are talking about something that goes far beyond the conceptual analytical abilities of, of human beings. And so, unfortunately, our understanding is implicitly imperfect. I mean, you know, you have this great debate going on between creationists and evolutionists. And, yes. and obviously, yes. there's a very strong uh, school of thought that wouldn't find what you say uh, acceptable. Oh, uh, well, I would uh, beg to disagree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, most uh, spiritual uh, order in this uh, world uh, is based on at the core of the belief in oneness. So what is spirituality? Spirituality is a belief in a higher being, higher, higher entity, again, if I may use the word, um, to which we like to connect and to which we, uh, we uh, believe as a creator divinity. As the, the, as the, and so uh, there whether you're Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim. Uh, or an atheist. Uh, or, well, uh, again, I watched the debate between, uh, rather <laughs> read the debate between <laughs> Dawkins and, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, genome director uh, uh, in America. And um, uh, he, you know, he considers himself an atheist. And yet he says, if there is God, it must be much bigger than any theologian has thought about. And, I think uh, uh, that's where the problem lies, that uh, we are only capable of per uh, uh, perceiving or experiencing as much as nature has, is able to. And uh, to me, uh, I think human beings probably are the uh, one, to our knowledge, who, can per uh, who has this perception that we do indeed come from one source experientially has been so far. But, but why is why this obsession with God? Uh, isn't it enough just to be a good human being, a compassionate human being, uh, to be a happy human being? And I would imagine that all of these are possible. Uh, I think that's what the Buddha taught. Yes. Uh, that all these yes. are possible yes. without being mm. obsessed yes. Uh, yes. Or, or worried or concerned yes. uh, about the yes. sort of, you know, the intellectual debate of, you know, yes. God exists, God doesn't exist, and yes. we, we struggle with that. Well, uh, whether you like it or not, whether you uh, know where it comes from or not, human being had an innate desire to know uh, why we're here, what is the purpose of life, who brought us here. And it's not, those questions haven't gone away, and uh, traditionally the answer has been 
in spirituality. Uh, that's when people turn to God or uh, a creator. Uh, well, so I would speak. argue and say, what, would you, what for you would be a distinction between spirituality and religion? Uh, religion has to do with the <laughs> organized, uh, organized mm -hmm. religion I'm talking about. It eventually gets into more into power and uh, 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 ego, and uh, 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 and if mm -hmm. if uh, you don't money, if, if my God is not better than your God, why would you give me money or or, mm -hmm. or subscribe mm -hmm. to me? And and mm -hmm. uh, true spirituality doesn't distinguish between these uh, rituals or theology or or uh, mine is better than yours. It's because uh, uh, true spirituality is based on oneness, and uh, that oneness is common to all religion. Mm -hmm. In fact, Allah, for example, is literally means God is one, and yet, uh, you know, they think theirs is the only God that is one. How could it be? It's a, uh, even a, uh, you don't need a rocket scientist to believe mm -hmm. that uh, if there is God, that it will be everybody's God. But yet, modern quantum physics is also telling you yes. that perceptions of reality yes. are not absolutely real. Yes. that it depends on, on where the observer is located. Yes. And so in that sense, we can never have mm -hmm. an absolute uh, insight, mm -hmm. quite apart from the limitations of the human brain, yes. uh, of what reality is, because reality is relative. Yes. And in a sense, that runs counter to the very notion mm -hmm. of absolute unified truth. Well, uh, I would say that um, we fortunately have a defined uh, um, person of reality, so to speak, uh, and in fact is used in quantum physics as well as in our daily experience, is that uh, what is reality? Reality is something that I can experience and you experience the same reality. You look at the Taj Mahal, you have an experience of grandeur, and you experience the same thing, you can, you can relate it to me, and so could everybody of these six billion people. Well, when you people. look at art, for example, huh? uh, when you look at art, yes. or even the Taj yeah. Mahal, theoretically, yes. yeah. not everyone experiences the same reality. I mean, some people look at the work of art and think it's terrible, yeah. and other people think it's wonderful. When you look at the range of uh, you know, human preferences, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they tend to vary. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Somebody likes pork, mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. hates beef, mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. Uh, so there, there, there are very elemental urges which are which are so diverse. But those are, uh, I, I would say, a little minor details and uh, mm -hmm. uh, exceptions. Mm -hmm. But in general, we have defined reality mm -hmm. that uh, <clears throat> in science, for example, mm -hmm. what is reality? Uh, we do an experiment in quantum physics, and uh, my experience uh, is something that you also can experience, and we can communicate and otherwise it's not science. And ten years later, the observations of science sometimes you know, put that out of the window and say, well, you oh, know, no, reality is a little different to what we thought 20 years ago. Uh, no, I, I would say that uh, it is, uh, uh, this, uh, it becomes sort of uh, bigger in uh -huh. a sense, for example, Newton's laws has dominated uh, the scientific world for 200 years, but Newton's laws is not thrown out. It's just that when you go to higher uh, uh, dimension, I mean higher distances and higher velocity, we have to use Einstein's laws. And we go to very small distances, we have to use quantum physics. But we still use Newton's laws to go to space, and we still use motor uh, uh, cars and uh, do everything. So Newton's, Newton's laws, laws work to a certain point of reality, well, and then well, we, yeah, we right. look so at uh, for another reality so that expands. We then yes. look at Einstein. So, so it's not so overthrown. Maybe we'll find uh, Stephen Hawkins will take us to different levels of reality. Even Stephen Hawkins has changed his mind. You know, the Big Bang, and and you know the origin of the universe. And some years later, he says, well. You know, maybe there was sort of, you know, the, 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 the black hole was, was, wasn't completely solid and there were little leakages happening through it. Yes. So in that <coughs> sense, our understanding of reality uh, is, is expanding. But you know, not to get obsessed with oneness and reality, what are the practical manifestations uh, of this uh, pursuit of this experience of uh, oneness? Uh, I mean, ultimately, uh, man is a social animal, we're yes. social beings, we yes. live collectively on this planet. Yes. What are the implications of, of the kind of insights that you have, you have secured for yourself on oneness, uh, the, 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 the discussion on, yes. on, on, on a common reality, yes. shall we say? They're twofold, I would say. Mm -hmm. On a personal level, I believe that uh, uh, this belief in, uh, that we come from one source and that uh, that source has not gone away after creating this universe, just mm -hmm. like the genome that we have 
uh, that created us is still present in every cell because mm -hmm. an adult mm -hmm. cell has been cloned into a, a, a mm -hmm. whole uh, a new 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 one uh, clone cloning mm -hmm. uh, the South mm -hmm. Dolly the ship. So the uh, source, the blueprint that uh, is uh, that uh, brought this universe in us is still everywhere present, and I believe it is inside us. And when we dive inward, we connect with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Uh, on one level, th that's th that's a practical thing that uh, you know it uh, get rid of stress and uh, it uh, uh, makes you gives you this feeling of happiness, which is something that hard to describe. But you know, you're, when you're happy, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the, uh, so in a, on a personal abiding uh, a level of personal ab abiding happiness, I would say that uh, uh, this idea of oneness is essential. But more so for survival of our species is essential today because technology has given us abundance. At the same time, it has given us weapons of mass destruction. And uh, uh, when it gets into the hand of people who believe that it's all right to kill others when you, uh, they don't believe in your faith, uh, then we, have, we could wipe out our species. Really. So in a sense, what, what you're saying is that uh, uh, the, 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 the sense of oneness establishes our interconnectedness. Our, our cosmic uh, kinship, with, uh, I would say cosmic kinship. kinship. With each other, yeah. and so may leave, lead to greater peace and tranquility on the planet. You're watching a conversation with Dr. Mani Bhomik, spiritual seeker and scientist. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to continuing conversation with Dr. Mani Bhomik. Uh, just going back to that uh, remarkable journey of yours from the village in uh, Bengal to the lifestyles of the rich and the famous, and then uh, you know, publishing a bestseller book. What was the underlying strand uh, that drove you, and, and, and what were the sort of the critical moments? You know, you've talked about uh, you know, two of them, and one uh, in your book, and you know, you're walking in the, in, in the dark night, and you're frightened, and you ask your father, you know, the, you know, the fear that you see him, is that God, and there is no answer. And then you're sort of in, 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 in California, and you're by the swimming pool, and uh, the party's over, the caterers have left, and all the beautiful women you've written about having escorted have left, and then you feel this great sense of vacuity. These are very sort of classic turning points uh, in, yes. in people's yes. lives, very yes. typical, archetypical in a sense. But what happens in, 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 in those, those critical moments? Is it sort of like Eureka and your life changes uh, because there's, there's, there's a moment of penetrating insight what is, what is that transformation that takes place? Uh, well, I think that, uh, uh, again, I have thought about those things from the point of view of a scientist. What is it that, the same question I have asked myself. Um, I believe that uh, when the psychologists say that a child, a child's personality is uh, formed by the age five, and it really depends a lot whether they have love or not. And why is this Indian are doing so well in the world. In USA, as you know, the Indians have the highest per capita income of any ethnic group that has come because of this family, uh, 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 the love that they get. And I was born poor, but I had a lot of love from my grandmother. Who, how can you give any more love than give your life? And you know, so that stays in, in, inside you, and that makes you uh, hopeful, uh, uh, optimist. I'm an optimist, and I think it came from that. That when you see, uh, uh, when when kids are uh, brought up in a sort of a jungle atmosphere in the ghettos, for example, they don't have this faith. So somehow, I must have developed uh, uh, inside me a neural connection <laughs> that mm -hmm. that says that uh, you know don't look at the half empty glass. Mm -hmm. This glass is half full, mm -hmm. and so I always had this. Uh, 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 conviction uh, that uh, uh, probably comes from the love that I have received as a child during my formative years, that if you stick to it, if you have determination, you can get to your goal. You've written, you know, we've been talking a great deal about mystical experience yes. and oneness. Yes. In your life, have you, do you do any practices, are there any techniques, uh, sadhanas, uh, that enable this mystical experience, this experiential oneness as, a, as opposed to uh, the, the, the logical, empirical understanding of oneness that science gives you? That's the only way uh, <laughs> I have kept my sanity, uh -huh. uh, through meditation. Mm -hmm. I practice meditation every day, mm -hmm. and uh, not enough as much as I would like to. 
uh, I, I think that uh, it's necessary for us to, con uh, to dive inward. Even a car needs a tuning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to get in tune with ourselves. So what, what form of meditation uh, do you do? Because meditation uh, is described as a zillion different things. Yes, right? yes. Well, but uh, I think that, uh, I have written that in my book again, that the basic to all meditations is a contradictory idea in a sense. In one sense, you really want to uh, get rid of all the uh, uh, spontaneous thoughts that come to your mind. In the other hand, to do that, you got to uh, latch on to some, uh, some, uh, you know, some people call mantra or a sound or a picture or, uh, or uh, in Buddhist tradition, uh, you know, they, uh, they, uh, uh, they have their ways. Everybody has their different ways to, uh, as a sort of a guide until uh, your spontaneous uh, thoughts go away and uh, you, you, are, you have Reaching you have a non-conceptual experience. Yes. Is, uh, do you have a master, a teacher, someone who has introduced you to this, or is it something that's, that spontaneously happened? Um, uh, at the, my, my, both of my parents were uh, followers of Ramakrishna, and I used to, of course, try to meditate uh, before that, but really didn't, I didn't have that feeling of oneness uh, as much as it was mm -hmm. exhilarating, mm -hmm. but uh, then spontaneously it happened, happened one, one day and mm -hmm. I thought if I jumped I would go to moon. It uh -huh. was such an exhilarating feeling mm -hmm. and I thought I've discovered something for humanity. Mm -hmm. Then I realized it's gone for thousands of years mm -hmm. and, uh, 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 and so uh, I was fortunate to have that but most people do not have that uh, uh, and so they have to follow some, some guru or some ways mm -hmm. and then I learned uh, the transcendental meditation, not from an Indian, <laughs> from, a, mm -hmm. from, a, uh, from a UCLA neuroscientist. Uh, well, you know, here's someone who's been through this incredible life's journey. Yes. Uh, from poverty to wealth, to spirituality, to altruism. Uh, you know, you support uh, scholarships for more than 100 young people yes. from your community. Uh, you have been, uh, you know, working so extensively in this area. Uh, but, but yet, you know, you talked about jumping and, 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 and maybe jumping onto the moon. Do you have a fantasy still, you know, something like, I don't know what, buying yourself a, 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 a trip on a spacecraft? Uh, would that be something uh, that it excites you? Uh, well, of course, uh, that would be. Uh, uh, I think that, uh, as you know already, poor tourist has gone to yeah, the space so what's station. the dream that you dream? <clears throat> well, my, my dream at this point is to bring the knowledge of oneness to people. Uh, that is more satisfying to me. And uh, it's, a a matter of time. Space. That, it's a matter of time that will go. Uh, NASA has already uh, said they're going to have a moon base uh, international. So you might get there too. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bomik. This has been a great pleasure, and I hope you get both to the moon and the feeling of oneness uh, spread as, as you so eloquently aspire. Thank well, you, sir. Well, thank you for helping me spread the, uh, <laughs> spread the oneness to the people and with your uh, uh, nice uh, exposure of the show all over India. I hope people will get the message. Thank you very much.